This tape leaves no question as to whether R. Kelly is guilty of multiple sexual illegal acts against a 14-year-old girl. The tape was shot in uh, the late 90s, approximately 1999. It depicts two separate scenes shot on two separate days within Mr. Kelly's residence at the time. Repeatedly on the video, both the victim and Mr. Kelly refer to the victim's age as being 14. That occurs in excess of 10 separate times on the video. Both the victim and Mr. Kelly can be heard referencing her age. At one time, or at, at one point in time on the video, in the first scene, it is clear that Mr. Kelly is having the victim watch another piece of pornography, which appears to be him with yet another young girl on a big screen television in the background. Repeatedly on the video, the young lady refers to Mr. Kelly as uh, daddy. The video depicts Mr. Kelly engaged in oral sex with the young victim, both receiving as well as giving, as well as vaginal intercourse and anal penetration. There are also instances of Mr. Kelly urinating on the young girl on the videotape. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Go ahead, hit the like, hit the share, subscribe if you haven't already. This video, I just wanted to address one narrative that drives me crazy. Because no matter how much we put in front of people's face, it is so dismissive for other people who are against R. Kelly to say that people supporting him are just groupies or just dismiss what we say because they assume everybody feels the same way. I want you to watch these clips and I'll be back to drive home my point. On backtrack, man, fuck that. I don't miss nobody. Lawyer certainly has lived a glamorous life, it turns out. During the few waking moments he hasn't spent on cable television, he has raced cars with a Saudi prince. He's flown private to visit five star hotels in the French Riviera. He once owned a $7 million home in Southern California. It's good being the creepy porn lawyer, but with a first name like Creepy, it's no surprise that Mr. Porn Lawyer financed that lifestyle in part by simply refusing to pay the money he owed other people. According to an extensive and fascinating report in the Daily Beast, CPL and his businesses have millions of dollars in unpaid state and federal taxes. Earlier this year, Creepy Porn Lawyer's law firm was ordered to pay $10 million to a former partner whom he apparently stiffed on profits from the firm. The firm did not pay up, so today the Creepy Porn Lawyer was hit with a personal judgment of $4.8 million. Not even the Creepy Porn Lawyer's landlords are getting a cut of that, though. In a court in Santa Ana, California convicted his law firm, evicted rather, the law firm from its offices for simply skipping four months of rent. Nobody from the firm even bothered to show up at the hearing. Maybe that would have been different if the hearing had been held inside a CNN news studio. So what's the difference between a creepy porn lawyer and a televangelist? Simple, one of them manipulates people's vulnerable emotions to solicit money and enrich himself, and the other is a televangelist. The creepy porn lawyer and his sole client, Stormy Daniels, have already raised $550,000 for more than 16,000 deluded fans, but of course they want more, they always do. Stormy Daniels says she needs at least $850,000 to cover her legal expenses, which of course consists mostly of retaining the creepy porn lawyer. Don't be fooled if you encounter the creepy porn lawyer holding up a Bible in your living room or leading a gospel choir in your backyard. Stand back, don't give him money, or try and toss him morsels of stale bread. Escape. I just looked at my wrist, I got time today. Fuck it, I'm crossing the line today. Well, that creepy porn lawyer working for Stormy Daniels had yet another busy weekend on cable television where he vowed to invade even more people's private lives. But maybe it's time that he himself was given a closer look. Here's what the Federalist Molly Hemingway suggested the other day. He is the front man for what is obviously a well-funded and well-coordinated operation that has received next to no criticism or reflection by many people in the media. And I think it is worth asking, like, 
who is this guy? How does he have access to special counsel or Treasury Department documents? Who are his connections? Who's paying for this? I think it's worth finding out just a little bit more about this thing that is driving so much of the coverage. Right. So who is this creepy porn lawyer? We don't ask ourselves the basic <laughs> questions often enough. Mark Stein does, though, so he joins us again. Who is this guy, Mark? <laughs> Well, he's a very wacky guy. Uh, he, he used to own the Tully's Coffee Company, uh, which uh, for people, for those of us from north of the border, sounds like a very bad joke. He had a company called, uh, you, know, you know, if you were a successful lawyer, you'd have a company called Global Barristers. But he actually had one called Global Baristas and got sued uh, for uh, not paying for $160,000 worth of coffee, which is literally grounds for a lawsuit. I mean, I, I, I don't quite understand. <laughs> this guy, this, this guy, not only doesn't he appear to have ever made any money for his clients, his own law firm went bankrupt. I've never heard of a, because America employs a, as many lawyers as the rest of the planet combined. I've never actually heard of a lawyer <laughs> so incompetent his own firm goes bankrupt. This, this guy is a very eccentric figure. And, and as Molly said, there is a lot more to be found about, about him. What does, it, what does it say about cable television or the other two networks that this guy has been the single most frequent guest, like maybe ever? Well, I, I think what it says is actually that he's much better at being a cable guest than he is a lawyer. I mean, the tragedy here, well, good, if you like, is that, is, that, is that Stormy, poor, I, bet, I bet you, Poor old Stormy won't see 17 bucks and 20. She won't have enough money to buy a decaf Avenatti at his Tully's coffee store by the time this is all through. That I don't, I don't, but he'll, but he'll get some publicity out of it. And That's it. That's a really good point. It's always the client who loses. These bitches will cry and be lying in your face. Fact. Slicker than us, gotta know how they play. The Quick reminder, make sure you go and check out my site, www.pdpastries, for all your pastry needs. I do ship, and you can send your payments through Cash App. All contributions to my food truck is always open. Cookie, cookie, I'm a cookie monster. Break your back, crack it open like a lobster. <laughs> I'm going to make uh, some brief comments and then I'll, uh, I'll take a few questions. Um, I can confirm that earlier today we handed over a second videotape to prosecutors. Uh, the videotape depicts Mr. Kelly engaged in illegal sexual assault of a 14-year-old girl. It is approximately uh, 55 minutes uh, in length. Uh, the conduct in the tape can uh, be described as nothing short of uh, outrageous, illegal. It leaves no question as to Mr. Kelly's guilt. Uh, on the tape, uh, Mr. Kelly uh, repeatedly refers to the victim uh, as having a 14-year-old uh, uh, body part. Uh, a vagina, although that is not the word that he uses on the tape. I'm not going to use it here today at this moment for obvious reasons. Uh, in addition, over the weekend, we have encountered a number of additional witnesses who we have interviewed, who we are in the process of preparing to meet with prosecutors. Each of these witnesses describe a uh, decades long uh, system of abuse by Mr. Kelly of underage girls uh, and conduct uh, that is illegal, uh, criminal, and is indicative of someone that should never walk free another day in his life. All of these young girls are not lying, ladies and gentlemen. It is impossible and it is outrageous for Mr. Greenberg and other enablers of Mr. Kelly to suggest that all of these young ladies, after 28 years, are lying about this conduct. This man deserves to be locked up for the rest of his life. And the fact of the matter is, and I'm going to call it like I see it, had these victims not been black, 
And had they not come from, in many cases, disadvantaged households or households of a lower socioeconomic status, this guy would not be walking free today. These, those days, however, are over. This reign of abuse and assault by Mr. Kelly is about to come to an abrupt and permanent end. <laughs> Now, many assume that people supporting R. Kelly are just groupies, just supporters who support him no matter what, which some are. However, those to fall in the same category as those people that assume that we were victim shaming these girls instead of pointing out that there's something bigger at play here. Somebody's funding all this. These people didn't just pop up out of nowhere. So when you start pointing out the inconsistencies and the corruption around this case, some point even the people against this man have to see Something's not right about this case. Those claiming they want him to stay in jail because they want justice, well, guess what? When you pile up all this corruption, common sense should tell you there's no justice in this case. Doing all this extra stuff to make a case against somebody is not justice, just in case you didn't know. And when I drop the videos, the pictures, the paperwork, for him to get on live to say that Azrael is not right in R. Kelly, really? Really? Now, I gave him R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how he got R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how I got the, e the emails between Azrael and R. Kelly. So you mean to tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? You know that I talked to Angela now. You gotta get rid of Mason and you have to get rid of this brother. Because they are working with Avenatti. This was a whole like this girl king thing. They knew about this from like weeks ago, like they've been planning this. I know you don't probably wanna listen to me. But please get you that you cannot let him do this interview on Monday. Like, all this stuff is a plan to just, like, put you apart and make shit worse. And not let who do an interview. This, this, they don't talk to God. The guy who's supposed to be, like, the publicist or whatever. Rip me apart, how? Get you away. Rip me apart, how? Like, it's just no, 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 just be specific. Be specific. Rip me apart out. Okay, I want you to find out. I, I want you to find out how and let me know. We did our job. We brought the information to the public. Surviving R. Kelly went off. We kept that shit going. We got bus drivers. We got police officers. We got assistants. We got friends. We got people alive. We got the storage. We got motherfucking video, audio.